Hey, so um, in my last video I was talking about the difference between when you're daydreaming and when you're visualizing with intention. Just sort of another angle or another attempt to explain it. Um, you know, understanding how all this stuff works uh, is challenging because language is very limiting and the way one person describes it will speak to one group of people, the way another person describes it speaks to another group. Um, it, it really comes down to, it's really personal to every person. Um, and actually, I think the first thing that grabbed me in Reality Transurfing on page 18, actually, so pretty early on, um, was um, the, basically that exact concept that this is all different for everybody and that lots of theories about the nature of reality and, you know, um, this method for creating something or that method for choosing a new reality, you know, all these different ways of putting things, um, basically all roads lead to God, essentially. Um, you know, there is no right way. There is no one way to do things. And so I wanted to read that section um, because it's pretty interesting and it can explain it a lot better than I just did. So, uh, in Transurfing, the concept of fate is based on an alternative model of the universe. Before you wave your hand in disappointment and decide that you are being fed yet another chimera, Remember that every known concept of fate originates from a specific worldview, which in turn is based on a number of unproven principles. Meaning that nobody has proven that one way is the right way. For example, materialism is founded on the proposition that matter is primary and consciousness is secondary. Idealism claims the opposite. Neither of these philosophies has been proven and yet models of the universe are constructed around both. Each model is convincing enough and has its loyal defenders. Both materialism and idealism explain the phenomenon of the world via philosophy, science, and religion, and both are right and both are wrong in their own ways. My hair funky. Man will never be able to describe absolute truth with total accuracy because the notions used in our attempts to describe the truth are of themselves relative. You have no doubt heard the idea expressed that reality is an illusion created by the mind, but no one has explained in detail where the illusion comes from. I made some notes here so that I wouldn't read anything that didn't need to be read. The human mind likes to have its feet on solid ground, free of ambiguity. And so for centuries, scholars have been tearing one, one theory in pieces in favor of another, which is then placed high on a pedestal. If you're here from Reddit, this happens all day on every subreddit having to do with philosophy or novel or whatever. It's just one person claiming they're right, another person claiming they're right. Um, often, I noticed early on when I first started reading the Neville Goddard subreddit, um, one phenomenon I noticed was often was two people arguing about something and I was just, I. I was like, what, you, you guys aren't, there's no conflict in what either, what you guys are saying. It's like there was a perceived conflict um, for what was in my perception, two people talking about the exact same thing. I don't know, um, I thought that was funny. After every fight on the intellectual battlefield for truth, just one fact remains undefeated. Every theory represents a separate aspect of the phenomenon of a multifaceted reality. Each theory that stands the test of time has its place, for they all represent one aspect of reality. If you decide that fate is something predestined that you cannot personally change, then this is how it will be. In effect, you are voluntarily giving yourself to the will of others, becoming like a small boat floating at the mercy of the waves. If, however, you decide that you can create your own destiny, then you will consciously take responsibility for everything that happens in your life, battling against the waves in an attempt to sail your little boat. You may have noticed that whatever you choose is always manifested. What you choose is what you get. 
and I forget what comes next after this, but this is why you can examine how you do things and use how you do things to create new things. You know, you don't have to use somebody else's method. You're already doing it. And if you decide that a way works, it will. Um, like I was explaining in my last video, for me, um, I've just decided, or it, maybe it was a couple videos ago, I've just decided that when I choose a different timeline, that's all I have to do. And I have to sort of visualize myself directing my energy, like beaming out from my soul or whatever. Um, I just have to direct my energy at that timeline in my mind and I will go there. I just decided that and it works. And same thing with the video I made yesterday where I was talking about when I visualize with a feeling of intention, you know, I just kind of imagine this feeling. I kind of, you know, I have a feeling that I have labeled as intention and I make sure I apply it to the visualization and in my mind that's all it takes and I will go there that's what I decided and and it's the same thing however you decide to make things happen is how you'll make things happen whatever worldview you choose to believe in the truth of that worldview will always be on your side and others will argue with you because they too are right any aspect of reality can be taken as a starting point and subsequently developed into a whole field of knowledge and it will have logical consistency and successfully reflect one manifestation of reality. An entire field of knowledge can be substantiated by just one fact, which although not fully understood, has its place. For example, quantum physics is based on a number of unproven truths and postulates which cannot be proven because they serve as the basic starting point for a given field of knowledge. In quantum physics, a microcosm sometimes acts as a particle and sometimes as a wave. Unable to provide an unambiguous explanation for such dualism, scientists took the phenomenon to be an axiom. The postulates of quantum physics bring together different aspects of reality in all its diversity of form, just like the blind men in the parable in one case proclaimed that the elephant functions like a stump and in another like a snake. I think I skipped that part on the previous page, sorry. If in describing the microcosm, one chooses to start with, with its particle quality as fundamental, then one arrives at the model of the atom created by the famous physicist Niels Bohr. In the Bohr model, the electrons rotate around the nucleus like the planets in the solar system. If on the other hand, one takes the main quality to be the wave, then the model of the atom will look like a blurry dot. Both models work reflecting different manifestations of reality. In this case too, one could say the scientists get what they choose. Any manifestation of reality can serve as a postulate or the basis for an argument which will undoubtedly make sense and have its place. In search of truth, people have always striven to understand the nature of the world, studying its individual parts. Bodies of scientific knowledge were created to describe and explain the various phenomena of nature and often they contradict each other. The nature of the world is one, but it reveals itself to us in many guises. As soon as one face has been studied and explained, another appears that does not fully correspond to the first. Scientists have attempted to overcome these contradictions by encompassing the, the, the diverse manifestations of reality in a single model of the universe, but this is no easy task. There is one irrefutable fact that unites and reconciles all branches of knowledge, and that is the diverse and multifaceted nature of reality. Variability is the world's most fundamental quality. Um, what I took from that, when I read that, I, I immediately thought of what I just said about the Reddit threads, where I would see people arguing back and forth. Um, clearly, um, arguing one facet of something, arguing another facet of something, and thinking that somebody was wrong. Um, I think that's the beauty of this. Uh, I think that's one of my favorite things um, about being a creator, being one of billions of creators on this planet. Um, it's just... You can pick your own way 
um, and it will work. Belief is at the core of it and you get to choose your facet. You get to choose how that works for you. Um, and when you try somebody else's way and it doesn't work for you, that doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means that you haven't found your way yet. Um, so I just wanted to read that and sort of bring that up because, uh, you know, what you get from this whole process is highly personal. Um, you know, I think each journey through this has little surprises and little things that you're meant to learn, meant by whom, I don't know. But um, I don't know. This is really a beautiful journey. Uh, not to sound like a big hippie or anything, but um, the beauty of this is in the individuality. Uh, you know, it's, it's in exploring your own path um, and realizing that you're just as powerful and creative as every other person um, out there. I don't know. It's been a wonderful personal journey for me so far. And uh, I just wanted to do a little video on that and hope that uh, that speaks to somebody today. <laughs>